Hi everybody, it's Joni Young. Welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial in acrylics. Today I'm going to be showing you a simple way of painting fog or mist over trees. You can apply this technique to any landscape that you're painting. I just happen to be showing you how to paint foggy looking trees today. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it very informative. And let's go ahead and get started with canvas I'm using today. I'm using an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I pre-painted it gray. However, you can do this on a white canvas or even black if you like. And I have the following colors, titanium white, light olive green, hooker's green hue permanent, Mars black, and cobalt blue. I have the following brushes, a number 10 filbert. You can use one smaller or larger if you like. I'm using this for my trees. You can also use a fan brush, whatever brush you feel comfortable using for painting your trees. And then I have a larger filbert brush here just for applying the white over to create the fog. You can also use a flat brush, smaller or bigger than this, doesn't really matter. Follow the same technique and principles using any size brush that you like. If you guys are ready, let's jump in and get started. The first thing I'll do is take my small filbert brush, get it a little bit wet, make sure there's no drips, just using a bit of water. And I'm gonna start off with my blue. I'm gonna lightly load my brush. Then I'm gonna go into my green. And I'm gonna mix both colors. And we'll create a dark bluey green shade. And then I'm gonna push the paint to load the very tip of the end of my brush. And these are gonna be the background trees. So we're gonna start back here and I'm just gonna pull up different heights, maybe some that go all the way up. We're just gonna start with our tree trunks and then continue to mix the paint and load it. And then we're gonna, I'm just gonna bring this one up a little bit higher. We're gonna start Part way down, leave a little line on the top of the tree. And I'm just gonna push and tap side to side, slightly making the tree a little bit wider. I have quite a few different tutorials, videos for how to paint trees using different brushes. Um, it's kind of a personal preference. I really enjoy using just going to catch my black here put that back up there before it slides down the palette um, I really prefer using filbert brushes I like the shape I get I like the uh, more controlled shape of the branches and the shape of the tree I get with a filbert um, but fan brushes also have their benefits too and a lot of people really enjoy using fan brushes so there's no right or wrong brush to use it just depends on what you enjoy using the most. So see the texture you get just by pushing and tapping and then a smaller, tinier branches, little baby ones, less pressure and just using the very end of the brush and not pushing hard. I'm gonna mix up some more paint. I don't want the paint to be too thick or globby because I'm gonna be drying this off before we um, go in and add our layer of white for our fog so i just wanted to go over my tree trunk and make it a little bit darker and notice how we're using the same colors for all these trees but the tones vary because sometimes i'm picking up a little bit more blue sometimes and in this case here you can see there's more blue in this one so that gives it more of like a blue spruce look and by doing this you'll get more of a natural look to your forests and landscapes and I just want to go over and put a little bit more depth in here. This way, if our trees are darker, not so see-through, we'll get more of a uh, an effect with our fog that we're going to go over with using some titanium white. Now, I like to use titanium white. It's my favorite. I can thin it and make it transparent. I can tint my white with any color I want and make some beautiful shades of pastels. Um, but there's lots of different whites out there. Zinc is one. Zinc is a transparent white, so it'll be transparent and see-through all the time. Um, but with uh, titanium white, you have options. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and add some more in between here. And I'm gonna take some black, blue, and green. So we're gonna have some uh, darker ones. Now you can see you don't need a lot of black. Black is such a strong dominant um, shade of paint. So be uh, very uh, careful with how much you add. And I'm just gonna come in here and just start to layer over. This is gonna create depth. Again, bring some of your tree trunks a little bit higher. So they're not all the same height. You don't need everything to be the exact same height, width, or color. Change it up a little bit. And so yeah, once we're done adding a few more of these darker, deeper trees, we are gonna dry this off. I use a hair dryer. Some of you may not need that because if you're painting in a warm environment, um, your paint is probably starting to dry already. And I'll touch base on that a little bit. Uh, that can be really frustrating when you can't control um, the drying time of your acrylics. Uh, I get this question asked more than any other question, how to keep your acrylics from drying out too fast. And um, I keep my studio on the cooler side. I'm not uncomfortable, but you know, I'll put a sweater on if I feel a little chilly. I use a waterproof palette. What I have here actually is just one of my um, wrapped up canvases. The plastic wrap is on it and that works really well. Um, and so that way I can wipe it off after and reuse it if I need to. So you're just kind of making the most out of something you would toss in the garbage. And I also have paper palettes that are waterproof. So they're like, um, kind of like how wax paper or parchment paper is. So the paint won't soak into it and that keeps the paint uh, wet a lot longer. I also use uh, professional grade heavy bodied acrylics and I keep them in a pile and um, they stay, they actually stay wet longer than thinner craft paints because those ones have a lot of um, water in them and the water, once it, they spread out fast, so then the air gets to them more quickly because they're so thin. And I hope that makes sense. Like they just end up drying out a lot quicker. So don't use a porous paper plate or um, paper towel. Leave something waterproof to put your paints on. And you can also add a slow drying medium, of course, to uh, your acrylics. Okay, so now we've got our background trees, our first layer. Let's go ahead, dry this off. And I'll meet you back here in a few seconds and we'll apply our white and we'll create some fog in here. Okay, now I've dried this all off and we can safely come over top without disrupting the first layer of paint we have here with a little bit of white. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that. I'm gonna use my larger um, filbert brush, but um, of course you can use any brush you like for this. Um, just a larger brush I find um, gets quicker coverage, less work, right? So what you want to do is just have, there's two ways of doing this. You can wet your brush a little bit. You really don't want any drips because then the paint won't stay on the canvas. So you just want to moisten, um, dampen those bristles and dab any drips off on a towel. The second option is having a water bottle, spray bottle. Turn the knob, the nozzle here to fine mist, the finest mist you can get. Hold your bottle back uh, about a foot or so from your painting and then just lightly mist. Now I have a few little drips here that are a bit too big, so I'm just gonna dampen, just tap with my towel. It's still a little bit wet and my brush is a little bit wet as well. Let's go ahead and pull into a little bit of our white. You don't need and you shouldn't need a lot of paint. So just go a little bit at a time. You can always add more if it's not enough. We're gonna start right about here where the trees end and where they start. The base of the trees. I like to do a crisscross. So I know that I need a little bit more 
water. If you can see too many brush strokes, if it looks streaky, add a little bit of water. Let's go ahead and go over that. Don't worry about how this looks down here because we're going to be going over that. I'm going to take some more paint and I'm going to just start working my way up. You can also, I know it's a little bit noisy, sorry. Just a little scumble. Little circles if you want. Now, because we're thinning our paint out with a little bit of water, what you see now is brighter than what it'll look like when it dries. So I'm going to dry this off and I'm going to show you what I mean so you'll be able to compare how bright it looks now to when it's dry. Okay, now I've dried it off and it's a little bit uh, more see-through now and less vivid, you know, that looks a little bit lighter now. So you can just see how a little bit of water can affect the opaqueness, the transparency of titanium white or any opaque paint. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush again, and I'm going to come in with a not green, though you can tint your um, white with any color you want. And that would also be kind of pretty like a light powdery blue fog effect. And I'm just going to choose a few areas that I make a little bit uh, thicker here. I'm going to bring that fog up a little higher in some of these areas. If I have too much paint or too much of anything, water or paint, I just wipe it off, the excess off on a towel. Next thing I'm going to do is dry this all off and then we're going to come in with our next row of trees. Now that it's all dried off, we're going to come in with the next layer, our next row of trees, and I'm going to um, demonstrate this one a little bit differently so you guys have options and um, can choose um, which you like to do better, which one works for you. So this time I'm going to take my large filbert brush and again you can use a large fan brush for this, use the same technique and you can also use a large flat brush for this technique. It's got to be just a little bit wet, just damp and we're going to take some black. You can even go back to this blue green black mixture but we want this to be a nice deep dark base. Tint it with your blue and green or straight black if you want. So I'm just going to make sure I'm going to do a trial here to make sure that it's wet enough for the effect that I want. And that is we're going to start down here and lightly press, pull and flick. I need a little bit more water. So I'll just mix up a little bit of water in here. I'm going to try that again, pull and flick. We're going to bring it up a little bit higher in some areas. You can even go up and down with it. We have a little bit more water still, some more green, some more blue. Press, pull, and flick. I'm going to use my spray bottle and just mist here. I'll start coming down a little bit lower. We'll add some pulls that go a little bit higher. So we get different heights. This is a really cool effect and technique. One that's really easy for creating an instant forest. I'm going to come in down here with a little bit more. Pulling in to both of my greens now.
a little bit of water. So we're starting to get those hints of green in there. And just look at this stage of the painting and process. We already have those foggy, misty trees. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that brush out and we're gonna come in with our other filbert brush. It is a little bit damp, but it doesn't have to be wet. You can apply um, paint to a dry or wet brush. And I'm gonna take my green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of the light olive green. And I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to start pushing and tapping. Pick up a little bit more and continue down. Now because the paint is wet underneath, I'm picking black up every time I do this. Now you can Continue painting it like this. We get a, a lot of different shades in here, which helps to make it look more realistic. Or you can add this green mixture over top of this dry. So you'll get a different effect with both. And each one has its benefits and is equally nice. See, if you have a little accident like that, where it's too blobby on the top, all you do is just pull it out lightly, make it a little bit taller, and then start back again. And then it's really easy to fix. I like all the colors in here. I like how this is looking. We've got a lot of depth in these trees. Painting trees for me is really relaxing. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you find most relaxing to paint waterfalls and trees for me i've painted i don't even i don't even know how many trees over my um over my lifetime of of painting that's what i first started out painting after watching bob ross as a kid he made it look so easy although i didn't have oil paint and i'm not an oil painter some of those techniques have stayed with me and stuck from a child. And it's really, you know, that dark base and then coming in with lighter colors like this and pushing and tapping. So you can apply these, I don't like to say rules because I don't think art should have any rules but this method these steps with acrylic gouache or oil paint thin to thick is best so start with a thin um, base coat and then come in with thicker layers okay now we can come in with our hair dryer dry this off or if you want to go take a break and have a coffee or a tea um, then that's fine to do whatever you have to do to make sure this has time to dry. And then we're going to come over with a few highlights because this is all going to dry darker than what we see here. But I really, really like the little bit of olive green and, and that dark hooker's green hue that we have with a black. So I want to make sure that is still visible once it's dry. So I'm going to need to come over with a little bit more of my light olive green. And um, you'll see how it takes shape once this is dry. We'll do that together step by step. Okay, now that this is all dry, I'm just going to add a little bit more of that light green. And I'm going to just go into my dark green, dark green, light green. Gently mix the two together. Not overloading. Be careful to not overload your brush. And we're just going to choose a few of these areas that look the brightest already. And we're just going to make those stand out a little bit more. Okay, just adding a little bit more depth in here. 
And so I think you guys can um, pick, pick up some great tips from this video. Even at this stage, I think it's kind of obvious that um, you're going to need to paint in layers and uh, dry it off before you add the fog. That's really important. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to have no trees if you add the fog and blend that out uh, over wet paint on your trees. So that won't work. OK, so I'm just a little bit extra that's left in my brush. I'll just tap and dab like this. I'm in with a little bit more of just the green now. It's going to look really pretty when um, after we dry this off and pull in a little bit of our titanium white and add a little bit of fog. I'm not going to add as much fog as I did back here. I'm going to make it a little bit more subtle and then we'll add another layer of trees. And once we're done that, so we'll have three layers of three rows and layers of trees all together. Okay, and once more, take my hair dryer, completely dry this off. Then we'll come in with a little bit of white. Okay, so it is all dry now. And this time I'm going to use my, because I want to have a little bit more control. So I'm going to use my smaller flat brush. It's a little bit wet. And I'm going to take a little bit of my white. I'm just going to make sure that I have enough water here that I thin it out, make sure it's transparent, um, but not so wet that it's going to disappear once it dries. Okay, so I'm going to come in right in here where we have this part in between the trees, and I'm just going to start to kind of feather it around, kind of crisscross. We'll have a little bit more in here and just lightly catch the yellowy green, olivey green part of the trees. And now it's more of a dry brush and that can kind of work in your favor as well when creating fog or mist. just think this is the simplest way to create the absolute most depth in a painting and mood. The two go together. When you create depth, you really create mood. And it's a combination of having light and shadow, thin to thick paint. And if you guys are just starting out with acrylics, I hope that this is breaking it down for you. And letting you see that it doesn't have to be something that you do for 10 years to get good at. I'm showing you these tips and tricks that I taught myself over a long, long time so that you can get, you can kind of skip all that, all that guesswork and frustration and you can get better quickly because... And you're going to be able to paint happier and i hope you guys are appreciating these tutorials and enjoying them feel free to leave a comment below i enjoy reading your comments and it helps um, my channel as well okay so we've got a little bit of mist in there i really like that i'm going to add actually a little bit more in here a little bit more just peeking through here Okay, so now we don't need to dry this off because there's not too much going on that is going to be in our way for coming in with our next row of trees. I'm going to use this same filbert brush and I'm going to take some black, a little bit of blue. I always like to tint my black with something just to give it a little bit more life and richness. And what I'm going to do, we already have like a dark base here, but I want to come in and add um, some tree trunks. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm just going to add some lines. It's all about layering. 
don't be afraid to go over those areas that you just painted. We'll get more depth when we do that. It's the only way to create depth is to get past that fear and bring some dark over light or light over top of the dark. They need each other to work. Okay, I'm gonna go back and take a little bit more, some green in here. A little bit of yellow, yellowy green, olive green. And I'm gonna start pushing and tapping for our next row of trees here. And then I'm not gonna go right down to the, the base. I'm going to leave the tree trunk visible part way down. We've got two kind of close together like that. So let's increase a little bit more of the light olive green. And we'll just come in and add a little bit more. You might have to, you probably will have to reload your brush each time. You can also have a few trees that are a little bit more sparse than others. Maybe leave a bit of a gap down the tree trunk and just have a little bit less, fewer branches, just to make it believable. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is pull in some white. Mix that in with my greens over here. And I'm just going to tap lightly over a few of these areas, making these trees a little bit more visible than the others. So we have that depth. We've got the, the light faded, um, moody trees back there covered in fog. And then we start to bring in some richness here and, and darker tones. And then with just a little hint of the greens here and there. And then here we're just going to be a little bit more, more brave and add a little bit more light. I like just adding a little bit though and um, less is more kind of effect. Where you just kind of take, pick one or two areas that you're going to make more of the focal point and add that light and it creates a little bit more excitement. See if you add this to every single tree, we'd be kind of left with no spotlight. It would lose its center of interest. And here we have this beautiful tree in the kind of in the center here and it just adds a little bit more importance to the painting. Whereas if everything is in full highlight or full shadow, nothing stands out, nothing complements one another and nothing and everything is just kind of competing where there's no competition here. Um, this is all just kind of backdrop that helps bring this in, bring this out right here. So the last thing I'm going to do before I dry this off is just add a little bit of black. I've washed and cleaned my brush out and I'm just going to go from the bottom here and 
just add a little bit more. To make it nice and thin, you can kind of gently push flat and wiggle, and that'll really fan your filbert brush out and make it really thin. And you can use it like a liner brush. So we'll just add a little bit more lines in here for tree trunks and make them stand out a little bit more against the blurry greens. Okay, it's that time again to dry this all off and then we're just going to pick a, a few areas to have our fog come down into. Okay, for the last and final step in this painting, I'm going to be using my smaller filbert brush again. A little bit of water on it, not dripping. We'll go in and take just a tiny bit of our titanium white, make sure that we don't have a lot on our brush. You need the water to make it transparent. So what I'm gonna do is, I like how this is kind of, looks like it's traveling down in here. So we're just gonna start, we could even sneak a waterfall in there too. Um, but I'm just gonna make it look like it could be maybe some fog over. Uh, we'll just let that kind of take shape. Maybe it will end up looking like a little bit of a waterfall without purposely trying that really was this is just spur of the moment um that's kind of cool though I like that I never planned for that I love I love seeing things take shape in a painting that I never planned on I think that wants to just be there it looks very tranquil and we'll just add a little bit of uh fog maybe in here as well light little scumble blending out little circles or these little crisscross crosses um, when you do the little crisscross like this or figure eights you get a little bit more movement right you get the little movement like that that can kind of look like smoke or steam as well so it's the same I've got lots of tutorials on how to paint um, steam smoke have a look through all of my over a thousand tutorials here on YouTube. I've got quite a few um, beautiful exclusive tutorials full length on just waiting for you to unlock on my Patreon as well. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more right in here. You can you can't go wrong with this. You can add as much or as little as you like. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial today. I know I sure have. It's been very relaxing. And I just love to teach you guys new techniques and hear back from you. So let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed this. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. When you subscribe, there's a little bell on the right. You can tap that way. You won't miss any of my uploads. YouTube has a kind of a funny way, the algorithm of um, hiding videos from viewers. So even if you're subscribed, you might not even see my videos. So it's a good idea if you don't want to miss anything to tap that bell. You'll get notified and you'll see my videos pop up in your subscription feed on YouTube. I'll have links below where you can join my Patreon and that really helps um, me be able to afford to keep going as a YouTube um, creator as well as on Patreon. It's my passion to paint. I love inspiring others. Painting has brought me a lot of joy, therapy and healing and I want to spread that to as many people as I can. Um, I wish you guys all the best. Take care and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!